Hello, hello, hello. Hey, 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 and welcome home to Silver City Community Theatre Radio Hour. I'm Wendy Spurgeon. I'm starting to get the hang of this. I'm your hostess here with weekly radio entertainment, meticulously edited by Chris Wellman of Mystic Way Productions and featuring the fresh, locally sourced talent of Silver City Community Theater. Welcome. We are right here, right now on Gila Membrus Community Radio, KURU 89.1 FM, Silver City, New Mexico, and online at gmcr.org. Welcome home. Welcome back. SCCT Radio Hour is a new weekly program on Kuru. We're super excited to be connecting with you again today. This is just our third official episode of SCCT Radio Hour. And many, many, many thanks to Kuru manager Marcus Hansen for the invitation to produce a weekly show. After the pilot episodes we submitted for Kuru's March pledge drive. I I didn't realize they were pilot episodes at the time, but it just worked out. And this is great fun. Um, We've performed some classics and recorded the audio over Zoom. We even got some old friends and new friends Zooming in their voices from out of town. It's great entertainment. And hey, if you missed our last two shows or if you'd like to hear any of the great episodes again, you can catch the replays at www.silvercitycommunitytheater.com under the events tab. But in the meantime, you are in the right place to catch our third official show right now. SCCT Radio Hour presents Arch Ovaler's Miss American, featuring special guests from Aldo Leopold Charter School's sixth grade drama class. That's right. That's what I said. Uh, As you may know, I've had the honor of being their drama teacher this semester. And the opportunity kind of came to me from out of the blue. In December, I received a text from Emily Aversa, who teaches down there. And she asked if I might be interested in teaching an acting class online for them as an elective teacher. And as it happened, I had just recently taught an acting workshop over Zoom for SCCT. So I was already kind of in the swing of adapting theater exercises for an online format. And it had been a long time since I worked worked with middle schoolers. So I said, sure. And then Fiona Bailey contacted me next and we set up the application and interview process and I was fast tracked in the onboarding process. And in early January, I met my combined class of sixth, seventh and eighth graders over Google Classroom. And we were off to a great adventure. So I called the class acting for the virtual stage. And we began an exploration of acting techniques for stage, video, and voice acting. Marcus contacted me in February about putting together some radio plays for Kuru's March Fun Drive. And it was the perfect opportunity to bring my student actors together with our SCCT company actors to voice some classic radio play scripts. A uh, subset of my combined Aldo class chose to perform an original radio adaptation of Alice in Wonderland called Mad Tea Party, complete with British dialects. They were just awesome. And Chris Wellman of Mystic Way Productions added music and special effects, and it turned out just wonderfully. It was in our second pilot episode followed by a Father Knows Best episode. And and you can find the replay at www.silvercitycommunitytheater.com under the events tab. Uh, Seriously, check it out. They were so good. And then we had spring break 
in mid-March. And as we were starting to come back, we reorganized to be able to meet in person outside for classes. And well, that's been so exciting because there is so much more we can do together as a class in person. And unfortunately, we had to separate the combined class. So I lost my two eighth graders. They were moved to an art class elective. I'm sure they're having a great time, but I miss you, Lola Nelson and Key Glover. I miss you. You were fun. And now I have a sixth grade class with five students and a seventh grade class with three students, but we are, we've been having great fun. Actually, uh, <laughs> this is pretty cool. My seventh graders are collaborating with the Aldo Live class to produce a zombie film short on campus. And my sixth graders are producing a video project made up of monologues, songs, and movement inspired by topics close to their hearts. And on our show today, you're going to get to hear some of the monologues the sixth grade class chose to work on. And I think you're going to be blown away. Um, now, these are contemporary monologues. They're, they're not from the golden age of radio. So this is a little... This is a little uh, side route. Uh, we're going to hear some contemporary monologues that we found on dramanotebook.com, where they are building a collection of fantastic original monologues for kids and teens, entirely written by students. And then after that, we'll hear our special feature. Arch Obeler's Miss American, and these same Aldo students are featured characters in the play alongside some of our adult SCCT company members, including myself. So this is a very special episode of SCCT Radio Hour, broadcasting exclusively on Gila Membris Community Radio, KURU 89.1 FM, Silver City, New Mexico, and online at gmcr.org. So without further ado, here are the monologues. Enjoy. Hello, my name is Zaya Pearson, and I am going to be doing Identity Crisis. You know the times when you lie in the dark and ponder upon a question about life? Well, this is one of those moments. Since we are both stuck here for another moment, I figure I will tell you a little bit about myself whether you are interested or not. Really, I just have to get these words out of my system. You see, they all say I am one of a kind. I thought that that's what people said when you were strange and they really wanted to be nice. Where I come from, there are basically two groups and I realize that I don't belong to either of those groups. One group, the group to my left, said I was too round for them and the ones to my right, well, apparently, I'm too spiky. Now, young one, like everyone else, I wanted to fit in. I was desperate to be accepted by either group, but it never worked. When I tried to sneak into a group, I'd get found out and separated pretty quickly. I think I had decompression. No, what's it called? Depression. There you go. I think that that's what it's called when you are sad all the time. But yeah, it was some dark time until, until one day. One day, someone from the group to our left said, do you realize you get to work every day? Working frequently is the greatest honor we could ever have, by the way. So I started to think, why? If I don't belong to a group, I get to work the most. And it struck me like lightning. It was because I was me. My roundness and my spikes are what made me stand out. And if I would take those away, I wouldn't be there for our masters to serve them well. It really is a journey to maturity. You'll get it someday. So now, with no shame and full confidence, I can announce to the world, I am one of a kind. Yes, I am a spork. I'm Marley from Mary Morales, and I'm reading... I know that I'm a freak, or I know I'm a freak. 
The description is a teen whose looks have been damaged in a car accident begs others to overlook her looks. I know that I'm a freak. I know that. Do you think I could forget with people telling me every day? They call me freak. Frankenstein. Monster. I'm sorry that the car hit me. I'm sorry that the doctors weren't concerned with beauty when they saved my life. I am a monster. But I am not one of those dangerous varieties. There are plenty who are, though. I'm talking about the monsters who hide in sheep's clothing and rip out with snapping teeth. The monsters who hide curled up in beautiful skin. People pass monsters every day. They eat with them, laugh with them, sit in their laps, and let their teeth near their throats. They smile and laugh and pull people in with dancing green eyes. They're wolves, they're sharks, and make no mistake, there's blood in the water. Most people don't see what, what they are under their porcelain masks and red lips. They just see innocent brown eyes and a, and a slim figure. They don't see the scales and claws that they show me. They call me monster. But monsters like me only look the part. And I prefer that to the false faded cades and doubtful edged words. I'm an honest monster. I bear my scars and my breaks. I let people see what I am. No lies, no false fronts. I am what I appear to be. Others hide their pain and insecurities behind masks and barbs. They hide their scars by making others bleed. And for that, I pity them. I don't see why I'm here. I'm not the one who needs a therapist. Yes, I'm stressed out. And maybe I've been a little emotional lately. You would be too if you lived at my house. All they do is argue. Doesn't matter if it's a big thing or a small thing. I mean, the other day, they argued about how to cut the toast. Mom had cut it straight across, and Dad said it should go on the diagonal. Then my mom said that she wasn't his mother and it was time to cut the apron strings. Whatever that means. When they realized I was in the kitchen, Mom flashed me her fake smile and passed me a plate of toast. I said I wasn't hungry. Next thing, she thinks I'm anorexic. So what if I stay in my room? It's peaceful there with my earbuds in. Music makes me happy. I've been thinking about learning to play an instrument. I've made the mistake of mentioning this to my parents. Right away, Dad offered to get out his old trumpet. Mom said that he should shut up and let me decide. Then Dad told Mom that she didn't have to be such a witch about it. I said I was finished with dinner and asked to be excused. And Mom all of a sudden acted concerned and felt my forehead to see if I was sick. I went to my room and I could tell they were still arguing. They were doing that thing where they were trying to keep their voices down, but it's totally obvious. They weren't always like this. I mean, they used to be in love. If you ask me, they're the ones who need therapy. I mean, am I missing something here? <laughs> Thank you for saying that. I really meant it. I do. Most people don't take teenagers seriously. Do you play an instrument? Oh, the cello. The cello is nice. But I'm thinking more like drums. Drums out the noise. I'm Tanil, and I'll be doing coming out. Hey, parentals, siblings, comrades, how are you? How's your day? I hope it's been good. Thank you all for being here. Well, I think it's safe to assume that I have something to tell you all. I am not exactly straight. Yep, I like not just boys, but also girls. So, yeah, I know it may be a shock to some of you, and others might have guessed it, but yeah. If you want to ask if it's a phase or a fad, no, it is not. If this new information is a shock to you, I have one question. How? I mean, seriously, how did you not see this coming? Look at me. 
How did you not question it when I cut my hair super short or when I would talk about LGBTQ issues, which was a lot? Or when I put a giant pink triangle on the door to my room? Or when I bought a rainbow bow tie and suspenders? I mean, come on, people. Well, now you know. If you can't accept me, then that's your issue. It took a lot for me to come to my terms and accept myself. And I'm going to be myself no matter what anyone thinks. Questions? Nope. Didn't think so. So, whew, that's over. Who's up for pizza? Hi, I'm Maya. I will be reading The Girl Who Cried Wolf. You ask me this every time, and it's been a year. So, yeah, I guess I'm ready to talk about it. I think I've told you about my sister, Catherine. I would play pranks on each other, like we would pretend we were dying or possessed or something. It was real stupid, but you know, we had fun with it. I heard her screaming in the kitchen and I ran down and see her holding a knife and covered in blood. I started to scream too, until I saw a can of spaghetti sauce on the counter and I realized it was a joke and we would laugh so hard that she would fall down it was just a thing we did you know but that day was different that day we had gotten home from school and our parents were still at work Catherine and I were still we're, we were in some sort of fight. I don't remember what it was about. Probably something dumb. Like her borrowing something and not returning it. But anyway, I didn't feel like talking to her. So I went up to my room to do homework. All of a sudden, I heard Catherine screaming and yell my name. I was annoyed because I assumed it was another one of her pranks. She would always prank me when I was mad at her, so I would laugh and forgive her. But I wasn't in the mood to play her games, so I ignored it. The scream went on for a while, and then it stopped. That's when I started to get worried. So I went downstairs to check on her, and she was gone. I never saw my sister again. I guess I don't have to tell you the rest. You know, my parents knows, everyone knows that my sister is dead because of me. Catherine Rivers was the girl who cried wolf. And I was the girl who ignored her cries. Hi, I'm Zaya Pearson. And I will be reading Killer Cat. Heron, listen to me. I know this sounds crazy, but... I think Max is trying to kill me. Yes, my cat. Can I stay here for a couple of days while I figure out what to do? It is not funny. I'm not kidding. Okay, you don't believe me. Well, the other night, he was waiting for me at the top of the stairs. He tried to jump on me when I got to the top, but I barely, I got out of the way, barely. He was trying to kill me, I swear. He's always hiding in piles of things and jumping out at me. Look at all these scratches. No, I don't know why. I feed him every day. I give him treats and lots of attention. Everything. Maybe I let him watch too much TV. Well, I woke up the other night with the feeling of being watched. Now, Max is always in the living room at night. But I saw two glowing green eyes at the bottom of my bed near my feet. It was Max. He was watching me while I slept. Okay, that doesn't sound that bad, but my door is closed at night. He opened it. My door has a knob instead of a handle. How did he do that? He is a cat. Wait, Max heard me talking on the phone before I left. He knows I'm here. Is your door locked? Hello, I am Maya, and I'll be reading Goddess. Sharit, that's the Greek word for hello. For your information, I am a Greek goddess named Persephone. Oh, you think your life is tough? Doing your homework, going to school, cleaning your room. Well, welcome to my world. 
I have to live, live in the underworld for six months of a year as the queen of the dead. My mother is the goddess of harvest. So she makes all the flowers grow and that sort of things. I'm living in the dirt, surrounded by dead people. At least I have the king of the dead for company. When I come back above ground, I transform into the goddess of spring. Want to hear my story? Once upon a time, when there was only spring and summer, my father Zeus, the king of the living, thought I should have a husband. So he sent his brother Hades to marry me. That's right. I married my uncle. A little bit gross. So just to recap, I, Persephone, the goddess of spring, married my uncle Hades, the god of the underworld. He took me to his underworld, which meant everything stopped growing on the top of the ground. Yep, no more pleasant spring weather for anyone to enjoy. So it turns out my mom wasn't happy about all this, and she went looking the whole world over for me. Meantime, Hades, my new husband, presumed me to eat six pomegranate seeds, <laughs> just little seeds. That was a make mistake that turned out to be. So then, wait, are you listening? Great. It's just that I haven't spoken to anyone in ages. Right now, I want all ears. Please? <laughs> there was a prophecy that means a protection by the gods that if anyone eats anything from the underworld, they would have to stay there. Now, I never knew this, so here I am warning you. After all this, so my mom and I finally found one another again, and she asked me if I have eaten anything, and I just said, just six pomegranate seeds. Then she said, no, Persephone, you have been tricked. Darling, listen to me. You now have to stay there for six months of the year, but the thing is, I loved Hades. Sure, he might be the king of the underworld. And this, the pomegranate trick was a bit wicked, but we seemed to be a perfect match. Anyway, back to the seasons. So now when I go see my wonderful Hades, my mother stops letting the plants grow and becomes winter. Because she's so sad, I'm gone. She's sad when I'm gone. So this is my story, and also the stories on how we had the season. So yeah, that means goodbye. It's all Greek for me. Okay, so I'm reading. Hi, I'm Innocent Zika House, and I'm going to be reading a short monologue. It's the genre is comedy. A description is a teen expresses the frustrations of being vertically challenged. Last night, my world was shattered. I realized that my younger brother, Colin, is taller than me. He was like, hey, I'm taller than you, you little hobbit. I was like, shut up, Colin. No one understands the daily struggles of being short. People use your head as an armrest, like, all the time. I'm not an armrest. I'm a human being. People also assume you're, like, five or six years younger than you are. When I went to the Ferris wheel, they asked if I wanted the eight and under ticket. Eight and under. I'm 10. Or I'm 12. People always feel the need to point out how short you are. Like, wow, you're three feet tall. No, I'm five foot and one quarter, you idiot. Then they're like, oh, you can just wear high heels, which is great advice. Because I love wearing shoes that make my feet feel like they're on fire. People also taunt you by holding things up above your head or put them on high shelves. I really want to strangle each and every tall person on the planet. But to do so, I need a stepladder. Hooray! Wasn't that awesome? Great job, Marley. Maya, Eno, Tanil, and Zaya, my sixth grade drama class at Alta Leopold Charter School. If you're just tuning in now, 
My name is Wendy Spurgeon, and you are listening to Silver City Community Theater Radio Hour with an homage to the golden age of radio, exclusively broadcast on Gila Membris Community Radio, KURU 89.1 FM, Silver City, New Mexico, and online at gmcr.org. If you missed our pilot episodes, you can catch them again at www.silvercitycommunitytheater.com under the events tab. And coming up next, we have a very special feature, Arch Obeler's Miss American. And these same Aldo students are featured characters in the play alongside some of our adult SCCT company members, including yours truly. But before we share that, I want to thank and acknowledge Chris Wellman of Mystic Way Productions for the audio editing and special effects. This show literally would not be possible without you. Thank you, Chris. And if y'all didn't know, Silver City Community Theater is a 501c3 nonprofit organization Donations are tax deductible and welcome at www.silvercitycommunitytheater.com. I like to share our mission now and again so you get to know what's up. We are a community theater. SCCT is committed to promoting community theater opportunities for residents of Southwest New Mexico in all aspects of theater, stage work, publicity, acting, and costuming. Our objective is to enrich, educate, and entertain with a vibrant range of live theater experiences year-round. And we are optimistic that as more people are receiving vaccinations, we will be able to offer live theater performances, workshops, and casting opportunities for our community. So stay tuned for a possible theater in the park experience, perhaps as soon as this summer or late summer, we're feeling the temperature. And as I learn more, I'll be sharing it right here on SCCT Radio Hour. So please tune in each week. Now, I wanna give you a little backstory about Arch Obler's plays. So according to Wikipedia, Arch Obler's Plays is a radio anthology series written, produced, and directed by Arch Obler. Minus a sponsor, it ran for one year, airing from March 25th, 1939 to March 23rd, 1940, and revived five years later for a sustaining summer run from April 5th, 1945 to October 11th, 1945. Lewis Titterton originated the program's title. Now, Titterton was described as a man who thought the future of radio depended on the vision of the writer. Oh. Now, with the launching of Arch Obler's plays, Obler became the first writer accorded name in the title status. Christopher H. Sterling, in his book, Biographical Dictionary of Radio, wrote, Obler, writing about the terrors and monsters within each of us, used his stream of consciousness technique to sh shattering effect and made radio a viable new art form. Obler used some of the scripts from Arch Obler's plays in his later series, Every Man's Theater. Wow, that's pretty cool, huh? Uh, now, I found the script for Miss American as I was searching for a story that featured strong roles for children. And I really lucked out that not only <laughs> did this script have five good parts from my five strong sixth grade actresses. And it also had a part that I wanted to play. That's rare. This is, so on this rare occasion, you'll hear the teacher and students performing together. 
Now, in the role of the announcer, I cast Mel Gelb because he's just so good at everything I put him in. As we were researching the show, we came across an extended introduction from the original recording, and we believe it's actually Arch Obeler's voice. So in the editing, we chose to use that recording to open up our piece, and Mel will close as the announcer in the end. And thank you. Thank you, Mel. Now, in the part of, in the role of Aunt Mary, I asked Liz Michaels to help us out. Um, and I'm taking the role of Ronnie, originally played by Katherine Hepburn. The, the, the writing is just so good. And I was inspired as an actress by her character arc in the play. The German children are played by our Aldo Leopold sixth grade actresses you heard earlier in the program. We've got Tennille Solberg as the voice in Ronnie's head, Zaya Pearson as Jan, Marley Convery Morales as Robert, Inocencio Casales as Miriam, and Maya Ari Gomez as Siegfried. So without further ado, SCCT Radio presents Arch Obeler's Miss American. America was not yet at war, and the air in Washington was summer pleasant. But neither Katherine Hepburn nor her supporting cast nor I thought of pleasantries in those days. We were there to try and convince a handful of congressmen to permit refugees to enter our country, very small refugees, baby refugees who would be in the path of the German blitzkrieg. We did the broadcast, and happily our immigration door opened a small blessed crack, and some very small blessed children escaped Hitler and company. Innocent children caught in the whirlpool of inhuman hatred. Children ostracized, excluded from schools and public places, threatened with physical harm, forbidden the simplest requirements of spiritual survival. Surely our American sympathies go out to these, the most pitiful and helpless of sufferers. America must do its share in offering refuge to some of these children as a token of our sympathy and as a symbol of our faith in the ideals of human brotherhood. Miss Catherine Hepburn, in another original drama. Its title, Miss American. The scene, a great luxury liner returning from Europe to America. It is late at night. A girl stands on the boat deck looking out into the darkness, her face to the wind that lifts white caps on the tumbling seas. Suddenly, an older woman approaches and speaks. Well, Ronnie, I must say this is a peculiar way to behave. What? <sighs> what did you say, Aunt Mary? I said it distinctly, and you heard me. Do you realize that people have been asking about you? Have they? Oh, Ronnie, do come downstairs, standing up here in the cold. Please, I'm all right. Oh, Ronnie, what is the matter with you? Four people. People? Oh, that. Well, well. After all, my dear, there are always a certain number of undesirables on board a ship this size. If you'd only stop wandering up and down the second and third classes, you'd find everything quite right and proper. Right and proper? As for the children, I spoke to the captain about them. Did you? Staring at us every time we walked the deck. 
I told the captain exactly how we felt about the matter. We? The things we talked about this morning. Oh. Oh, yes. I remember. I should think you would. You were quite definite in your opinion. And of course, I agree with you. They've no right to take such young children and bring them to New York to, to, to heaven knows what. <laughs> but you know the captain, that little charming smile, and he changed the subject and, oh, well, what difference does it really make? We'll be docking in the morning and away from all this. Aunt Mary, there's, there's something I want to tell you that... No, no. Uh, tell me later, my dear. Uh, right now, the thing for you to do is to go down, get dressed, and join the others just as quickly as you can. Uh, come now. No. No. I want to stay here. Why, Ronnie? Please. A few minutes longer. I... I'll come down. Ronnie, I I've never known you. <sighs> oh, very well. Have your silly little mood. But I don't understand what it's all about. Mooning up here in the dark like a romantic 16-year-old. All I say is hurry downstairs. We'll be waiting for you. Romantic? Yes, it is romantic. I'm in love with... Oh, if she knew. I'm in love with... Yes, love at the 23rd sight with... America. That's a childish thought to have. Patriotic, Pat. Of course it is, of course. Getting softening of the brain. Thinking silly things. Over-emotionalized. Ought to go below and join the party. Stop standing here thinking to myself. America. No. No. Why? Why shouldn't I think it out? How did it start? The things we talked about this morning. Yes. Aunt Mary did say that. The things we talked about this morning. Those children. Always staring at us. Why bring them over? Full of foreign ideas. Always staring. Not like us. Foreigners. Not like us. Not like us. I said that. I remember. Not like us. Not like us. Not like me. Not like me. Resented their being on board. What happened? Oh, let me remember. I went walking on the lower deck. They, they were sitting there as usual. The four of them. Yes, the four of them. Sitting in a row, white faces staring, eyes looking at me, at me, at me. I couldn't stand it. What did I say? Yes, yes. I said, you children, don't you know it's bad manners to stare at people? For a moment, no answer. Three little boys, one little girl. Their staring eyes. Why should they stare at me? I said, answer me, one of you. If you're coming to America, heaven knows why, at least they should have taught you some English. They didn't move. 
four rigid little figures. And then... We are speak English. Well, at last, the Sphinx speaks. No, that is not my name. He said that. Then he closed his mouth, and the four of them were sitting there once again, those eyes of theirs staring, staring. I said, what are you sitting there for? I've been watching you all through the trip. You sit there in those deck chairs hour after hour. What are you waiting for? America. She said that, the little one, and then she closed her mouth so tightly I could see the muscles of the corners of her lips. She sat there, tense, frightened, not another sound from any of them, their eyes beyond me on the sea, on the horizon. I said, all right, you're waiting for us to reach land. But what's that got to do with the four of you getting up, running around, having fun? Come on, don't you know how to laugh? You, don't you know how? When we are in America, then we fall off. Oh, so that's it. You don't like the sea, you're waiting for the land. Oh, no, we're waiting for America. Waiting for America. What silly nonsense were these children thinking? Couldn't laugh until America? I thought to myself, how silly, proof that these children, strangers, aliens, foreign to our thought. Aloud, I said, listen, the four of you, are you trying to rib me in your infant continental manner? If you're waiting until you land, until you laugh, I'm warning you, you'd better start laughing now. Ha! There isn't much to laugh about there, let me assure you. The dullest, dumbest place on earth. Why do you think I went abroad? Laugh in America, don't make me laugh. We've got depressions and recessions and concessions and dissensions and... And while I kept talking, the children's faces grew angrier and angrier. Their eyes, larger and larger, hating me for what I was saying, angrier and angrier, and until at last one of them cried out, No! No, wait. Wait? Miss America, wait. What you say, it is not right. What's not right? All these things you say of America, I do not understand. I do not know, but this I know. It, it is not right. No, no, it is not right. Not right. No, 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 right. not, right. not right. Now, wait a moment. And what is right, Herr Professors? America is is good and is a good place because Yon, you say it because in America all men are are created equal yeah and they are in endowed by by they're created with with the right of life and 
Liberty. And liberty. And, and the suit of happiness. Bravo! Right out of the old Declaration of Independence. So, where did you learn that and what does it mean? John taught us. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Here on the boat, they gave me a book. I read. I, I, how you say it, Miss American? I teach. You teach. You. And what you, you teach all, all that about life and liberty, what can it possibly mean to four children like you? Maybe, maybe I do not understand everything you say, Miss American, but what we learn, it means that no matter what is wrong in America, it can be fixed. We are equal and free, and we can work and help America. When he said that, I, I didn't have anything more to say. Nothing cute or bright or clever. Four little children. I stood in front of them, but suddenly I, <laughs> I wanted to say so. So many things to them, but my throat, I, I couldn't, I, I couldn't, until one of them said, Please, Miss American, what the books say about America, it is all right. Right. Tell us of it, Miss American. Bitter, please. America, it's, it's very large and very beautiful. And all these people in it, or their fathers, or their father's fathers, came over the water to it just the way you're doing. And, and there's a bigness to it and a braveness to it. And you need never be afraid. And no matter what goes wrong there, there's always hope. As long as there's someone like you to remind the rest of us that the, the American way is the human way. what I said to them. Yes. And they came close to me and touched my hand and they smiled at each other and at me. And so I, I'm in love. Yes, in love with my country for remembering four little people who want to help us. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we bring this program starring Katherine Hepburn to a close. The broadcast was especially written for this occasion by Arch 
Obler. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning in, that was Arch Obler's Miss American on Gila Membris Community Radio. KURU 89.1 FM, Silver City, New Mexico, and online at gmcr.org. My name is Wendy Spurgeon, and you are listening to Silver City Community Theater Radio Hour with an homage to the golden age of radio. By the way, we're holding auditions. We are having so much fun. Why not join us? Have you ever wanted to play a character voice in a radio play? Come on, come on. Well, now here's your chance to perform in a low pressure, highly creative radio program recording from the comfort and safety of your home. Zoom in your voice. Your actor friends from out of town can zoom in their voices too. Seriously, in our pilot episodes, We had Thomas Leeper zoom in his voice from Albuquerque. Now, some of you may remember Thomas. He was uh, the SECT board president before Phyllis and, and, uh, oh, just a delightful young man, a teacher. Uh, And he and his lovely wife, Tay, they had to, well, they chose to move to Albuquerque. and, And that happened just kind of right before the pandemic hit. Um, But we were able to kind of reunite for some playmaking over Zoom. So he Zoomed in from Albuquerque and uh, we had a guest actress who Zoomed in her voice from Portland, Oregon. So if you are, if you have friends who don't live here, but would love to play in a safe way and create this magical theater experience, uh, send them the word. They can audition too. Super fun. Um, so we've, let's see, we, we would love to feature your voice in some great classic radio plays that we've got coming up weekly. Auditions are on Saturdays from 10 a.m. to noon Mountain Time through the end of the month and perhaps longer, but just, you know, get signed up for, a, for this coming Saturday. Our auditions are really easy, they're fun, they're low stress, there's no need to memorize or to be on camera. So for information and to sign up, go to thewayoftruth.live slash radio. And tune in again next week at this time for our fourth official show here on Kuru 89.1 FM. Silver City Radio Hour, Silver City Community Theater Radio Hour presents the Golden Age of Radio featuring Buck Rogers, Episode One, and the Bickersons, Tax Refund. And as always, you'll get the skinny on SECT with some more green room gossip and shenanigans. So thank you all for listening. This has been Silver City Community Theater Radio Hour. I'm Wendy Spurgeon, your hostess here with weekly radio theater entertainment, meticulously edited by Chris Wellman of Mystic Way Productions and featuring the fresh, locally sourced talent of Silver City Community Theater right here on Gila Membris Community Radio, KURU 89.1 FM, Silver City, New Mexico, and online at gmcr.org. Have a great day, everyone. See you next week. Bye for now.